Hi, and welcome to the Academic History section of the UC Transfer Application. Before you begin this section, please be sure to have all of your materials ahead of time, including unofficial transcripts of all previously attended institutions. All coursework from colleges and or universities will, will need to be reported in this section, regardless of whether or not the course was completed or incomplete, in progress, planned, had a grade of D, F, FW, no credit or no pass, non-transferable, repeated, academic renewal, dropped with a W or EW, a vocational course at your community college, a remedial course, a college course completed or attempted while concurrently enrolled in high school, or a college course from an international institution. A good point of reference when questioning whether or not you need to report a course is to think about whether or not you have a transcript on record from that specific institution. If you have a transcript from any institution, regardless of the course or the institution, you will be required to report the course in this section. Information entered in this section must be thoroughly and accurately reported. If you accept an offer of admission, the UC will require official transcripts from each institution to verify the information self-reported. Make sure you refer to your transcripts as you fill out any information. Don't enter information from your memory. It's important to report all of your schools, courses, and grades exactly as they would appear on official transcripts. Students should complete the section chronologically from first enrollment to current enrollment. Be sure to also include planned enrollment as well. Students must self-report all courses taken at every institution. Again, all grades, including D, F, and repeated grades must be included. You'll have a chance to explain low grades at the end of the academic history section. Let's go ahead and get started by clicking on continue. If you've entered your academic information into the UC Transfer Admission Planner, also known as TAP, you can import your coursework into the application. In order to import your coursework, you must use your UC TAP login ID and TAP email address from the UC TAP account. If you do not have a TAP account, go ahead and click on Save and Continue. In order to evaluate your academic record, the UCs need to know about the last high school that you attended. To begin entering information about your high school, click on Add High School. From here, you will be able to select one of three options regarding where you attended high school. You have the option to select in California, outside California in the US, or outside the US. In this example, I am going to select in California. Begin typing the name of your high school. After typing in the name of your high school, click on search. Results for your high school should auto populate. And if you see the name of your school auto populated, click on the select button. But if you do not see the name of your school, you can click on the manually enter school button. By clicking on this button, you will have a chance to report your high school manually. You will also see this button available if you are searching for your high school under the Outside California in the U.S. option or Outside the U.S. option to find your high school. Because my high school is listed, I am going to click on the Select button next to my high school. In this section, begin answering questions regarding dates of attendance, degree, diploma, or certificate received, 
and when you received your degree. After answering the question regarding dates that you received, the date that you received your diploma, you will be asked about international experience. When it asks, did you attend school outside the United States for any other part of high school or secondary school? If you answer yes, then it will provide you with a drop menu asking you to select the language of instruction. In this example, I'm going to answer no. When you're finished, please select save and continue. You will then see your answers to questions about the last high school attended. Please review your answers for accuracy, then select continue. Next, you will be asked about your college information. Before entering any college coursework and grades, you'll need to first enter information about all colleges and or universities attended, including dates of attendance for each college, term system for that college, and diploma or certificate information if applicable. Dates of attendance should be entered as consecutive dates even if enrollment was interrupted. For example, if you took some time off but then went back to that school, you'll still need to enter the first month and year of attendance through the last month and year of attendance. To begin entering your college information, click on Add College. Similar to your high school search, you will be asked where you attended college. In this example, I am going to select in California. Now it is going to prompt you to enter in your college's name, city, or college code. I am going to begin by typing in the name of my college to see if it auto-populates. Once you type in your college, click on search. I can see that my college was found because it is listed. If you can't find the name of your college listed, then please check for misspellings or try typing in only a portion of the college. For example, type in Azusa if it is not auto-populating Azusa Pacific University to see if it shows up. Keep in mind that if you attended a trade school or vocational school, the campus name may not auto-populate. If this is the case, you can report your attendance at these institutions in the additional comments box, which will be available at the end of this section. Because the name of my college is listed, I am now ready to click on the select button. We can see that it is now asking me for my dates of, of attendance. Be sure that you list June 2021 as your end date if you plan to be enrolled at Citrus College during the spring 2021 semester. When you are asked about the college's grading system, the system may already recognize your college's grading system. Therefore, you may not need to select a grading system. This will be the case if the college you are reporting is a California community college. When asked whether the college's term system changed, most students will select no and see the questions expand, asking about the college's term system. However, if your college's term system did change from quarter to semester or vice versa, while you were in attendance, you will need to select yes and provide more information. Because we answered no, we are seeing a question about the college's term system. When asked about the college's term system, please be mindful to select the correct option. For Citrus College students, it's important to select semester with a winter session. If you are reporting a college or university that is under the quarter system, please be sure to select quarter. 
I'm going to go ahead and select semester with the winter session. After selecting your term system, you will be asked to fill in the bubble of each term that you attended. It is important to fill in the bubbles with your transcript next to you so that you can be sure that you are selecting the correct terms. Please be sure to select the bubbles for the term that is in progress as well as planned terms. These terms are auto-populated based on the dates of attendance that you reported up here. So I went ahead and filled in the bubbles next to the terms that I have attended or that I'm currently in or that I will be attending. We can see as an example that I checkmarked the terms I attended and clearly there was a huge gap between my first semester attended and um, even when I returned, we can see that I skipped the spring 2019. Because there's gaps in my education, I will be asked by the UC in my application to explain the gap in my education. We'll go over this part when it comes up in the application. When you get to the level of degree, diploma, or certification question at the end, please select the drop menu and answer accordingly. If you're earning an associate degree for transfer, ADT, you can enter the information here along with the ADT major. In this example, I'm going to report that I have an ADT in psychology. If you don't have an associate's degree or an ADT, you can select no degree. As an example, I'm gonna go ahead and report an ADT in psychology. It will then ask when you will be receiving your ADT or when you did receive your ADT. So let's assume I'm going to be receiving mine in June of 2021, which is the spring. Once you're finished, go ahead and select save and continue. You will then see all of your college information in a box for you to review, similar to the high school section. Please check for accuracy. If you attended another college, please select add college. If not, then you may select I am finished adding colleges. In this example, we're going to assume that I attended Mount SAC during summer 2019. So let's, let's select add college. So we can see that I've entered in information about Mount SAC and now I'm in the review section. So I wanna review both Citrus College and Mount SAC for accuracy. Once you're finished entering in information about the institution or institutions that you attended, please select, I finished adding colleges. We are now in the section of the academic history where we are ready to report courses by semester. We can see that both Citrus College and Mount Sac are listed in two separate boxes, each one listing the term that I checkmarked where I can now enter in my courses with grades. Below these college boxes, I am seeing an additional box or an additional section um, where it is asking about the terms that I did not attend college. The reason that I'm seeing this is because I didn't attend college for certain terms and it's asking me to explain the gap in my education. If you did not skip any terms during your college enrollment, you will not see this section. But because I skipped some terms, I need to explain why these terms are skipped, term by term. We'll get to this part after we report our courses. Let's go back to the boxes above where it asks me to enter in my courses and grades for each term. The terms are already listed in chronological order for me so I'm going to start with my first semester at Citrus College in fall of 2014. And while entering my course, I'm going to pull up my transcript so that you can see how I'm entering in the course. So I'm gonna click on fall 2014 and I'm gonna click enter courses and grades. Okay, so I've pulled up my Citrus College transcript and I'm looking at my fall 2014 semester where I took music 114 and I received an F. So 
there's something very important, um, and I, I, um, I drew a box around it in red that says academic renewal. In your unofficial transcript, when you're looking in your wingspan unofficial transcript um, in, in your uh, portal, you will see a notation underneath your course if you received academic renewal, which is a process that you go through um, in an appointment with a counselor and there is paperwork submitted and it needs to be approved. Um, so if you have academic renewal, it will show up underneath your course and uh, you will be able to select the grade option of AR instead of selecting F so that it's not affecting your GPA. So let's go ahead and see how I'm going to report this. I'm going to, so down here I'm in the application. Next to fall 2014, I'm going to click on enter courses and grades. So let's go ahead and scroll down. And of course here it's giving me some grade codes. It's, it's explaining um, which grade codes to use um, in the event of each grade. So we're going to use the grade code Academic Renewal or AR. So first what we're going to do under fall 2014 is we're going to look for the subject. And again, it's Music 114. So let's find Music. And we are finding different music courses. So this one, we know it's Music Education because of the E at the end. So we're going to click on the arrow and we're going to find music 114 and there it is so we're going to check mark the box and now there's a drop menu that came up next to the course so let's click on the drop menu and let's select AR so again we're not selecting F we're selecting AR and there it is for academic renewal and now that I'm finished because that's the only course I took in fall 2014 we're going to go all the way down and we're going to click on save and continue. And now I should see my course populate under fall 2014. And now I'm ready to um, begin entering in my fall 2018 courses. So I've just pulled up my fall 2018 courses up above. So let's go ahead and go to fall 2018 in my application and we're gonna click on enter courses and grades. So let's start with the first course, Biology 105. So let's go ahead and look for that one. So here's Biological Sciences. And let's find 105. There it is. We're going to check mark it. And it looks like I got an A. So let's go ahead and select A. And now um, we're going to look for English 101. And I got a B. So let's just scroll down to English. There it is. And let's find 101 and check mark it. And now we're going to report a B. And now I'm going to look for math 151, plain trigonometry. So let's go to math and watch what happens here. We're going to go to math and we don't see 151. And that is because that course is not UC transferable. If we look at the transcript, we can see um, over in this column that it only says CSU, but not UC. So we know that it's not transferable to a UC, only to a CSU. So we have to manually enter in this course. So what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way down and we're going to click on, I don't see my courses. Now it's going to allow me to manually enter in that Math 151 course. So under Department, I'm going to type in Math. Under Course Number, I'm going to type in 151. And under course title, I'm going to type in plain trigonometry. And let's put in the units. And notice I got a W, and I have to report it. So uh, I have to do everything exactly as it's showing on my transcript. So in this case, uh, we don't see a W, but we see a WI. And if we look at those grade codes at the top, we can see that the WI means withdraw. So let's go ahead and select withdraw. Okay, so now we've already manually entered in Math 151 and now we're ready to um, enter in Speech 101. So let's go to Speech. There it is. There's 101 and I got an A. So let's highlight A and now we should have this semester ready to save. So let's click on Save and Continue. 
and let's check out the fall 18, make sure it matches what we have up here. And it does. So there's my courses, there's that Math 151 that I manually entered in, and it does match what I see above. So now I'm ready to enter in my Winter 2019 course, and we can see on the top screen that I took Business 160, and I received a D. Now let's assume that I repeated the equivalent of Business, business 160, but I took it at Mount SAC. So when we're ready to enter in my Mount SAC course, it's going to be the equivalent of Business 160, and I'll refer back to this grade once we get there. But for now, we have to enter in the D exactly as we see it on the transcript, even though I repeated it. So let's go ahead and begin entering in the course. So for Winter 2019, I'm going to click on Enter Courses and Grades. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to click on Business and click on 160 and I'm going to report the D and now I am ready to save it. So now I can see my Business 160 course. And now I'm ready to enter in my Fall 2019 courses. We can see my Fall 2019 courses on the top screen. So let's go ahead and click on Enter Courses and Grades. And let's start with the first course, so Bio 104. Let's click on Biological Sciences, click on 104, find the B, and now let's go to English 103. And check mark it and enter in the grade as a B. And now we're looking for Kinesiology 173. And we can see that I received an F. Again, let's assume that I repeated kinesiology and we can see that on the transcript because there's an E that says excluded. So, um, so we're gonna see that kinesiology 173 was repeated. It was repeated at Citrus, um, but I still need to report it as I see it on my transcript. So um, I see two kinesiology subjects here. Um, I'm gonna go with kinesiology because this one has competition. So um, if this one was the competition course, then I'd see a C at the end. So I'm going to go with kinesiology and let's go with 173. There it is. So I need to report the F. And now I'm ready to enter in my last course, psychology. So we're going to go with psych 101 and we're going to report a C. And now I'm ready to save my courses. So there is my fall 2019. So now I'm ready to enter in my spring 2020 courses and we can see them on the top screen. So let's go ahead and click on enter courses and grades. And I'm going to enter in the courses as I see them. So I'm going to start with Econ 101. And I'm going to report the C. And there's my repeat. That's the one that's coming next. It's Kin 173. So this time around, I got a B. So I'm going to report the course as I see it on my transcript. So let's go ahead and select Kin 173. And now we're going to report the B. And now we can see I took Math 151, which is non-transferable, so I'm going to have to manually enter in that course. And we can see that I received an EW, which is an excused withdrawal. So I need to report that grade as I see it. So again, clicking on math, I don't see math 151, so I need to manually enter in that course. So I've already manually entered in Math 151 at the bottom, but let's go ahead and click on the drop menu for the grade, and let's go ahead and select EW. So I'm going to select EW, and now I'm ready to add my last course, which is Spanish. So with Spanish, this is a foreign language, so we're not going to see it listed under Spanish. We're going to select foreign languages, and there's Spanish 101, and we're going to report the C. So now we're ready to save my spring 2020 courses. Okay, so now I'm going to enter in what I'm taking currently in fall 2020. 
So, so now I'm ready to enter in my courses from fall 2020. So this is what is in progress. So we're gonna click on enter courses and grades. And let's assume that right now I'm taking math 165. So I'm going to select math and I'm going to select 165. And we can see that it's auto populating IP for in progress. So it's doing that for me, so that's good. So let's go ahead and finish entering in the courses that I have in progress. So I've just finished entering in my fall 2020 courses that are in progress. And there are uh, three courses listed here. So now I'm ready to enter in what I'm planning to take in spring 2021. So let's see if the same thing happens. Let's see if we see a PL. Uh, so I'm gonna click on enter courses and grades. And let's assume that I'm going to take art 101 in spring 2021. So I don't see art, so I'm gonna go with fine arts. Let's see if that's where I'll find it. There it is. Okay, so art 101, I'm gonna select it. And sure enough, there's a PL. So it's doing it for me. It's auto-populating the grade for me. So this is planned. So it knows that this is planned, so it's taking care of the grade for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish entering in my spring courses. So now I've finished entering in my plan courses for spring 2021, and they are the three courses that we see here. So I'm pretty much finished with my Citrus College transcript entry, but we still have Mount SAC. Um, as you may recall, I received a substandard grade in Business 160, I got a D, but let's assume that I repeated the equivalent at Mount SAC in summer 2019. So let's go ahead and pull up my Mount SAC transcript. So here is my Mount Stack transcript from summer 2019. So I took business law 18 and I received an A. So I'm going to enter in the course exactly as I see it on my transcript. So we're gonna click under Mount Stack uh, for summer 2019. We're gonna click on enter courses and grades and let's go ahead and find the course. So there's several business courses. We wanna go with business law and let's click on 18 and we're going to select the a and now we're going to save the mount sac course so now we can see that i have entered in all of my courses from both citrus and from mount sac so just a quick note on the business law that i repeated at mount sac um, the evaluators, um, when they're looking at your self-reported courses, they will be able to, um, to, to see that you repeated the equivalent of Business 160 at Mount SAC, but as an applicant, it would still be a good idea to let them know or just give a heads up in the additional comments box that you repeated the equivalent of Business 160 at Mount SAC with Business Law 18. So when we get to the additional comments box, we're gonna talk about what sort of things you can enter into that box, um, but that's a really good example of something to mention in the additional comments box. So, um, so we, we definitely wanna talk about that repeat being, uh, being uh, completed at Mount SAC. So going back to the sections where it talks about gaps in education, um, you do need to explain why there were gaps in your education. So here for spring 2015, I'm just, I already entered in um, a quick statement just so I could um, get through this section, but you, de you definitely want to um, explain more. So let's go ahead and click on edit. So when you're giving um, a reason as to why there was a gap in your education, um, you want to explain what was going on during that semester that you were not enrolled in college. So as an example, I'm going to say I was working full time and saving money for college. So I'm going to save that. And you want to do that for as many terms as it is giving you um, where there were gaps in your education. So sometimes the reason may be the same reason. So I can 
list the same thing for fall 2015 that I was working full time and saving money for college. Um, but if something else was going on, like maybe um, maybe there was an extenuating circumstance, uh, maybe there were health issues, maybe there was um, a, an, a, a family member who was ill, then you definitely want to explain what was going on during that term that you were not enrolled. And once you're finished entering in your um, reason for the gaps in attendance, then go ahead and click on continue. The next section of academic history is asking about minimum requirements. What it's doing here is screening the applicant to see if the applicant has completed the minimum requirements for transfer admission to a UC. So the first question is asking, prior to transfer, will you have satisfied the entry-level writing requirement? And I selected yes. So what it's asking here is whether or not you've completed the two English composition courses. So I completed English 101 and English 103, if you remember, in my college coursework. So I entered yes. Prior to transfer, will you be certified for completion of the Intersegmental General Education Transfer Curriculum, also known as IGETSI. So the IGETSI pattern is the general education pattern that transfer students can follow if they're looking to complete lower division general education so that they don't need to take it at the UC campus. If you have questions about the IGETSI, please make an appointment with a counselor. So I selected yes. And now what it's doing is it's letting you know that prior to transfer, you will need to complete the seven course pattern. So these are the minimum general education courses that you see transfer applicants must complete in order to be um, eligible for transfer admission. So what it's doing is it's screening me for the seven course pattern. So the first two courses in the seven courses um, are the two English composition courses. So here it's screening me to see if I completed the two English com composition courses. And I did, I have English 101 and I have English 103. And it's letting me know up here that based on the courses that I reported in my academic history, they do meet the English composition requirement as long as I completed them with a grade of C or better. And I did because I have a B in both. The next part is looking at the third course in the seven course pattern, which is mathematics. So it's telling me that based on the course that I entered into my academic history, it does meet the mathematical concepts and quantitative reasoning requirement if I completed it with a grade of C or better. So it picked up on my Math 165 course, said it does meet the, uh, the mathematical concepts course as long as I pass it with a C or better. So right now it's in progress. And then the last four courses of the seven course pattern, it goes over in detail in this paragraph here, but it is telling me that based on the courses that I entered in my academic history section, I have at least four courses in the two subject areas, and it goes over those details with me. So it's telling me in this paragraph that I have met the last four courses. So in short, it's letting me know that um, I have completed the seven course pattern. If you haven't completed the seven course pattern or you're not um, going to be completing the seven course pattern by the deadline, um, so for fall 2021 admission, your deadline to complete the seven course pattern is the end of spring 2021. So um, it will alert you in this section if you have not uh, completed the seven course pattern or are not working towards um, completing the seven course pattern. So it will give you that heads up. So after you review this part of the academic history, go ahead and click on save and continue. This next section of academic history is asking about additional information. So the first question is, have you ever been on academic probation? So if I select yes, then it will expand to another question. Are you now or have you ever been on academic probation at any school other than a UC campus? If I select yes, it's going to ask me to list the name of the school. Uh, as an example, I'm going to select no. 
And now it's asking whether or not I've participated in the UC transfer pathway. And it gives me the option to select more than one UC transfer pathway. If you'd like more information on the UC transfer pathway, go ahead and click on this link and it will take you to this page. And this will give you more information about the UC transfer pathway. Um, so now we're going to go into the California State student ID number. We should be able to leave this blank. So let's, uh, let's leave this section blank. And with additional comments, it's asking you to report any information that you would like the evaluators to know about that you weren't able to um, explain anywhere else in this academic history section. So for example, a break in attendance, poor grades in a particular course or year, specific information about your school environment, or policies that affect your academic record or choices for classes. And then for international applicants, if you selected other as your school's grading system, please explain the grading system here in the additional comments box. So, um, so here, this is where you want to um, explain anything that you think may, um, may come up as a question with the evaluators. So I listed here at Citrus College, I completed Business 160 and received a D. However, I repeated the equivalent of this course at Mount SAC. The course I completed at Mount SAC was Business Law 18, and I received an A. So that's something that as an applicant, I would just feel more comfortable um, listing in the additional comments, just as a heads up. So that's exactly what the additional comments box is for. Anything that you want the evaluators to know that you weren't able to explain about your academic history. So once you're finished, go ahead and select Save and Continue. And now we can see that we're at the review section of academic history. So what you wanna do here is just review the information that you reported. So we're going all the way back to um, high schools, colleges, then we're gonna go into college coursework, then we're gonna look at the minimum requirements, and we're gonna look at additional information. And there's my additional comment. So if you feel that everything looks accurate, then you can select continue to test scores.